Hey everyone, my name is Adi. In this video, we will talk about perspective. We will learn the different rules of perspective, different types of perspective, and more. What is perspective? Perspective is the way we understand the space as three-dimensional. What makes us perceive that some elements are further than others? All the different parts of the artwork should demonstrate depth and we should feel the distances between them. Our papers or canvas, etc. are two-dimensional. They only have length and width. So we have to create an illusion of depth to trick the viewer into seeing our artwork as three-dimensional. How can we do that? The rules of perspective. Further objects look smaller. The further they are, the smaller they will look like. The closest tree looks bigger than the tree behind it, that is bigger than the tree behind it, and so on. Technically, the trees are about the same size, but they seem different. Distances between objects look shorter the further they are away from us. The distance between the first tree and the second tree seems longer than the distance between the second tree and the third tree. As we go, the distances will look shorter and shorter. Again, the person who planted the trees probably planted them in the same distance from one another. What changes is how we see things. When you draw, follow your eyes, don't trust what you know. The bases of objects don't look like they are on the same level. Do you see the point where the first tree touches the ground? And where the second tree touches the ground? How about the third? The base, the lower point of the trees, went up with every tree and continue to climb as they become further. Again, the trees are not actually on different heights. There is one case where things go down instead of going up. We will see in an example later. Objects in the front hide objects behind them. The first tree covers the second tree and so on. We can't see the entire tree. And also, the shapes of things can look different. We will talk about it more. I used the trees as example, but these rules also apply to the buildings, the windows, the tiles, etc. Let's look at another example. The further the people are from us, the smaller they will look like. The lines on the ground look thinner the further they go, and in addition, they seem to get closer to one another. The distances between them become more narrow. One point perspective. When all the lines of the perspective are going to the same place, when they all meet at the same point, the vanishing point, it's called one-point perspective. The vanishing point can be in different places, in a photo, in an artwork. It doesn't have to be in the middle. When you take a photo or plan a drawing, you capture only part of your surrounding so you can choose where the vanishing point will be. So actually, the vanishing point can even be outside the frame, like in this photo. 
In order to draw a one-point perspective, first place a vanishing point and then draw lines that go through the point. I am drawing one horizontal line parallel to the paper, one vertical line parallel to the paper and one cross of diagonal lines. These are guidelines. All the perspective lines have to go through the vanishing point. It looks like an analog clock and hands pointing on different hours. The lines above the horizontal line points up. The lines below the horizontal line points down. The lines to the right of the vertical line points right and the lines to the left of the vertical line points to the left. If you want to draw a line between two lines, it has to make sense. I'm adding buildings to the drawing. I'm placing the windows, the doors, according to the lines. Even if the window is a square, you can't draw it as a square. I made the part of the building that face us parallel to the edges of the paper, but it can change depending on the specific point of view. What can we do when the vanishing point is out of the frame? Let's look again at what we drew. The horizontal line crossing the vanishing point is in the height of our eyes. The angles of the lines become bigger the upper or lower they go. Why? Because they are getting further from the height of our eyes. Remember the demonstration on the cup? in the video about how to draw the head. Let's use this cup for demonstration. When we look from above, it looks like a circle. But if we rotate the cup and put it at the same height of our eyes, it becomes a straight line. In between, it looks elliptic. How much it rotated will determine how wide or narrow it is. The lines of the side of the cup become closer if we look from above or below. So things will look straight if they are the same height of our eyes or camera in this case. And will become rounder the further away they get from the height of the eyes. The same rule apply to square objects. They will look like a straight line. In the height of our eyes and will become more angular the further away they are from the height of our eyes. The same rules that work on the cup work on other things too. Using this concept we can create a drawing with a vanishing point outside the frame. All you have to do is to decide on the locations of two lines and then you will be able to find the locations of the other lines. Just think about how the angles are compared to one another. I'm creating a drawing very similar to the previous one to show that it doesn't really matter if the vanishing point is outside the frame or not. It's the same drawing process. People usually think about perspective as lines going to the horizon. The viewer on one side of the road, railway, street and the vanishing point on the other side. But the same rules of perspective also work when you look up or down. 
like in these examples. The upper it goes, the thinner the building become. All the other rules apply as well. We said in the beginning that one of the rules is that shapes can change, right? So this is a good example. The building is a circle and the lines become rounder and rounder, just like the cup. In this building that is a square, the angles become bigger and bigger. In this example too. Arches also look interesting from below. We can see the bottom of the arch and the ceiling behind it. So what makes a perspective what it is, is where we are standing in relation to the space. Before we move on to two-point perspective, we have one more thing we talked about in the beginning that we didn't cover yet. Why in this photo the bases go up and in this photo they go down? Need a clue? Think about the viewer location. The answer is, in one photo the bases of the trees are below us and in the other the pillars are above us. It's also true for the windows of the first photo. Two-point perspective. Just as the name suggests, this perspective has two vanishing points. Some of the lines will go to the first point, the others to the second. You will see the two-point perspective in places when two rows meet, when you look at the corner of a building, the corner of the building will look bigger than the rest. In the place where the two sides meet. Let's draw a two-point perspective. Place the two points. Mark one vertical line for the meeting place of the two sides. And a horizontal line for the height of our eyes. Add two angles to help you determine the other lines. When you draw the buildings, doors, windows, they will have to be on lines that go into one of the two points. The elements will be bigger near the vertical line and will become smaller the further they go. In the right side of a building, the elements will be on lines that go to the right vanishing point. And in the left side of a building, the elements will be on lines that go to the left vanishing point. When you draw a line, use a ruler Place it on the suitable vanishing point. The lines of this window will go to the vanishing point on the right side. You can use things like light and shadow and color to emphasize the perspective. You can use a contrast of light and shadow between the foreground and the background, like in this photo. You can also use color. For example, if you create two people in the same color of clothing, far from one another, it will make our eyes travel from one to another, pulling us into the perspective. Before we move on to the last part of the video, I want to ask you a few questions. In this photo, is the perspective a one-point or a two-point perspective? 
You can pause the video if you want more time to think about it. If you said one point, you are correct. If you said two point, then you are also correct. If you said both one point and two point, bravo. This photo has both. What are the rules of perspective that we talked about in this video? Let's see what you remember. Further objects look smaller. Distances between objects look shorter the further they are from us. When objects are in different distances from us, their bases will look like they are not on the same level. Objects in the front can hide objects in the back. Shapes of things can look different depending on the distance from the height of our eyes. Force shortening The more something faces us, points at us, the shorter it will look like. And things will look longer when we see them from the side. The distances inside an object in force shortening will become shorter too. Thank you so much for watching until the end. I hope you will find this video useful. Knowing perspective and point of view will be helpful for anything you draw from now on. Make sure to subscribe if you haven't done so already so you will not miss any new content. If you liked this video why don't you share it with more people? Thank you again. See you soon. Bye bye.